Baxter comes clean, Edith is fired up, Robert gets passed over, and Mary must go upstairs to take off her hat. This is Up With Downton. Uh, and we are joined by a very special guest who just walked into the studio. Yes. Is that Carson the butler? Oh, it's a very nice pleasure to be here this morning. For, oh my gosh. Uh, Oklahoma chili day. Of course, in Britain, of course, we call this Tuesday. That That's fantastic. We call it Tuesday here. <laughs> or actually, it's Monday, isn't it? So. Yes. That, they call Monday Tuesday. Oh, that's so interesting to me. <laughs> many, many things are very different over there, of course. Um, uh, we've been watching Downton over there for since the fall. Wow. And congratulations to you, Mr. Carson. You were appointed head of the uh, World War I Memorial Commission, so that's well, pretty thank cool. Thank you, thank you. You know, it troubles me that his lordship was not asked to uh, head this committee, but... He's well, fine. Uh, He'll get over it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look who just walked in. Is that Cora? Hi, Cora. Oh, Carson, you mustn't worry about such things. Yes, my lady. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> let's introduce the panel. I'm Chase Harvick. I'm the moderator. <laughs> to my right is Cora, a.k.a. Ashley Barkham. Ashley, tell us about you and why do you love Downton Abbey? About me? Well, who, who are you and why who, do you love who Downton am Abbey? I? Yeah. Where am I? I really want to know. Uh, well, I'm director of communications for OETA, so I am legally obligated <laughs> to watch and enjoy Downton. <laughs> and it's fun anyway. And I love Downton. I'm actually really excited about the season. The writing is sharp, and it really seems like all the actors are comfortable in their roles now. Um, they've kind of, I think, cut the fat, would that it were. And... Um, it's a really strong cast. Oh, yeah. And it seems like ex kicking off with this first episode, uh, Julian Fellows and the, and the writers are, are obviously having a good time. And uh, I have a feeling we are going to get a lot of Maggie Smith this season, which isn't that why we all yes. love oh, yes. Downton. Is, is, and Penelope Wilton. Oh, yeah. The, the <laughs> cousin, <laughs> cousin Isabel. Yeah, the Golden Girls. <laughs> They're the <laughs> Rue McClanahan and Betty White of uh, Downton. And yes. finally, the third on our panel, Mr. Carson, a.k.a. Robert Birch. Hello. Robert, who are you and why do you love Down Abbey? I am just a lowly uh, television producer here at OETA, uh, produced State Line and Back in Time. And I have loved Downton Abbey since the very first episode. My family and I, we get together and watch every Sunday. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, destination television for us. We love it. Yeah, I usually get a call from my mother right after the episode <laughs> airs and oh my gosh you know Edith burned down the house of course I think that's true for most of Oklahoma OETA is actually one of the top rated stations in the country for Downton so it's really? a statewide thing yeah it and we um we just completed a series of screenings before the series premiered and you know Robert I, I was we were blown away by number one just the turnout the number of people who came in costume, and in Lawton, I think we had wow. three or four Miss Patmores alone. <laughs> yes, she was, um, she was the big... Mrs. Patmore. The people, people love this show. Yeah. I love this show. I'm like you. I've been in since the very first episode, and, and it's just it's so fun to talk about it. And that's one of the reasons we do the podcast here at the stations, because we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> so why it's not? It's very <laughs> unique. You cannot find anything like that uh, on television. You know, there's no sex or violence or, or cussing. Well, I so. remember, um, you know, when uh, Upstairs Downstairs aired uh, years, I was, uh, I think, in junior high school, and I remember that it was a sensation at that time. Uh, it was, you know, widely received here in Oklahoma, and, uh, but, you know, I don't think that the writing was anywhere near the, uh, the level of, of Downton, and, you know, you couldn't really get into it, the, uh, the, the, um, the great uh, um, situations that have, have come year after year with Downton Abbey. It's because they keep getting having more secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Double down on the secrets. Oh, I think yeah. everyone's got a secret now. Every secret has a price. Even That's ISIS. The yeah. Ooh. Yeah. ISIS. <laughs> ISIS has a big secret. I think we should just call him Donk this season. <laughs> That's, that was a, a cute I know, Did they change city. the name of the dog? What yeah, is the origin some controversy of that? Of that. No, Isis is, isn't it like a Greek god or something? Yeah, right, so, yeah. I mean, it's uh, just a, Egyptian. Egyptian, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> um, I, I think one of my favorite moments of the night was little Sibby 
calling Lord Aww. Grantham Donk. What is the origin of that? Is that a British thing? I've never no, no, heard no. that. It was donk? kind of, there was a little exposition explaining it. Mary said something about that's because you play the donkey game with oh. the kids, like pin the tail on the donkey. Uh-huh. So Donk comes from donkey. She just latched onto that. Oh, so he's a donkey. <laughs> he doesn't like it much. Actually, I, after this first episode, I have to agree. Oh, really? yes? Oh, he's yeah? A, he's... Lord Grantham, he's kind of he's kind of a spoiled brat. He is he's a little bit of a yes. of a prat. But Cora, what would Grandpapa oh. say? <laughs> oh. Would Grandpapa? Have... He's just dismissive of her at every turn. Yeah, I uh, mean, good grief. <laughs> but she just looks down. <laughs> well, and, and Cora right, and Robert, Robert did have an anniversary dinner, and it was very awkward. It was one of the more awkward uh, dinner parties that the uh, Crawleys have hosted thanks to uh, Miss Bunting. What's her deal? Uh, well, the rudest uh, house guest of all time. Uh. She's no Sybil. <laughs> she... let's, just, let's just put that out there. You know, I think there is a way to be dis- to, to disagree without being disagreeable. Uh-huh. Um, I think maybe we need to uh, sit Miss Bunting down and, you know, she might be a, a great teacher in spelling and, and math, but she is not an etiquette. Or, she, could, you know. she could use some etiquette Lessons yeah. from maybe Cousin Isabel or even Branson. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, Tom. Tom. Yeah, we yes. have to call, he's Tom. Tom. Oh, yes, Tom. Um, I, the only thing I really admired about uh, Miss Bunting was the fact that after the dinner, she wanted to go and thank the servants yeah. for the meal because it was, you know, no one ever does that. So I well, think that's no. why she wanted to do it was to spite him even more <laughs> to make sure she went up and asked <laughs> Lord Grantham if she could. Just yeah. to kind of make him feel like even more of a jerk. Well, you know, they're arguing about the uh, where they're going to place the monument for World War One for yes. all the, the the fallen soldiers. And you know, when this aired in uh, in the Britain in this last fall, they were going through the hundredth anniversary of the uh, the Great War. So there was a lot of talk about it at the time. It's all you know, Downton is uh, timely. Even the talk of. Uh, social upheaval, the change of, um, you know, the Labor Party uh, coming into uh, power in Britain at the time. Uh, There's a strong Labor Party uh, movement now in in Britain. Absolutely. And and Robert, I think you hit the nail on the head. The the whole thesis of the series, I think, is kind of distilled in one of Carson's quotes from last night. He said, "The, the nature of life is not permanence, but flux. And that is so readily apparent in I think every season. He's so good at delivering those lines too. <laughs> he really is. Yeah. It is well, and I another uh, something I noticed last night is, you know, they they didn't replace. Um, oh, forgive me. Uh, in the kitchen, Ivy, Ivy went to yeah. America. They're not replacing her. Da- Daisy's upset about that. It seems like, um, you know, people are leaving the house. They're not replacing them, not necessarily because. Uh, you know, they don't have the funds to do so, but people aren't looking for those positions anymore. No, they're well, they're looking for middle class opportunities in the city and Absolutely. And Lord Gillingham doesn't even have a ballot any longer. No, he well, doesn't. No, at home the no. butler takes care of him. But no. when he's on the road, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, he got Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates that was takes care awkward. of him. But you know, that's kind of <laughs> we're talking about change. Change benefits some, it, it hurts others. Uh I think we're seeing an, a great equalization between classes in Great yeah. Britain. Which was very scary at the yeah. time. Uh, especially to Robert, Lord Robert. I mean, he is, he's fighting it tooth and nail to, uh, to hold on to any position that, uh, you know, keep things from happening. Now, and what? Can we, can we just say poor, poor Edith? No. I, I just, I love Edith. I really do. I have a ton of sympathy for that character, but she just... I don't know. It, it just somebody you're, has to get the short end of the about stick. Her. <laughs> Mary's mean. <laughs> yeah, I sibling mean, we, rivalry. Is that what it is? oh, is it, it is a real thing. I want if this goes all the way back to that letter she wrote in season one to, which was pretty nasty. What but she did Mar- to Mary. Mary was terrible to Edith before the letter. I mean, she's, oh, yeah. I, yeah, she she kind of instigated that, didn't she? You know what I think it is? I think it's the the old the oldest child having to constantly reassert her position as, you know, the, the dominant, you know, dominant, the firstborn. And yeah. 
But life is kind of taking care of Edith anyway. Like, does Mary need to pile on? <laughs> like, just just in general. Mary's middle name is Pile On. Um, <laughs> the Jan Brady of downtown. Yeah. I, did you guys laugh at that scene right at the beginning of the episode when she comes in? It's the first time we've seen Mary this you know season, and she says, "I have to go uh, upstairs to take off my hat." Is that something that requires? <laughs> I guess it, back in three the day. servants. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go appearance. ring my bell, the bell, so that they can come. Th- remove the hat from my head <laughs> and fluff my hair. So speaking of Edith, yeah. we know that her daughter is named Marigold, and we know that Marigold is being raised by the Drews, the farmers, and uh, Edith is a little unwanted. She She's coming around too often. She's everywhere she goes. <laughs> they don't want you. <laughs> is is the wife concerned about uh, that that uh, that she may be after her husband? She's, yes. Mm-hmm. Because she says, you know, when she leaves, she says, oh, I think she fancies you. Well, I, I just wonder if there are rumors about Edith's past impropriety floating around the villagers. Because mm-hmm. we know uh, season two, I think, she was kind of had a little thing with uh, Farmer Drake. I think the Drake was his mm-hmm. last name. Oh, that's right. When she was getting into driving the tractor yes. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I just wonder if that's what Mrs. Drew is concerned about. I, I her reputation. Think, uh, <laughs> for farmers, <laughs> she's got a thing for farmers, Edith. <laughs> well, and Branson has a thing for the nobles. Uh, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, obviously with Lady Sybil, but then now is there some sort of tension between he and uh, Lady Mary? Robert, I am mm. in the minority on this. I, I really want, you know, I like Gillingham. I like. Blake, Charles Blake, I, they're they're fine, mm. but I think there is a secret option, a, you know, a secret door that that has not been presented. I think that door is Tom Branson. Yeah. That would solve a lot of the series' problems. If you know Branson's wanting to leave, what if? I mean, because he and Mary have spent the past season and a half becoming platonic friends and and business partners, I would, I would like to see them together as a couple. I I think that would be a really interesting pair because. What do, you, what do you think, Ash? You're giving me a look <laughs> that our, our listeners can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. Is enough time passed? I don't, yeah. she, I don't see a chemistry between them, I guess. I, maybe I'm missing it. Um, I mean, anybody would be better than bunting. <laughs> <laughs> so, they work so closely together, you know, they're, uh, um, Together in the grief of their lost. Gosh, I I really liked her chemistry with Charles Blake last season. I'm yeah. kind of disappointed that, you know, seems to be we Lord didn't Gillingham him. for yeah. now. He's yeah. I don't know where he went, but at the end of last season, it seemed to be I don't know what happened between the finale and um, this first episode, but um, I don't know. I guess I'm still Team Blake. I well, hope he comes back. Yeah. On a, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. But, but on, you on a guys are note, probably right, I'm sure. Because that would just, you know, ex- fans of the show would love it, oh, yeah. I guess, if enough time has passed. Well, how would it play with uh, Lord and Lady Grantham? They, well, they got over it with Sybil. I mean, yeah. maybe it's a different thing if it's your firstborn. Can we, I, I think that does, even with, you know, daughters carry a, a special place of honor yeah. in the family. At least it did then. And, I, hey. Hey. It still does. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a lighter note, I want to real touch on this storyline because I think it was um, maybe the, the the most funny in this series history, the uh, Mr. Mosley. Oh, his hair. And, oh. and Ashley Mosley. and I were at the Mosley live Mosley and Edith should get together, Mr. I think. Mosley. <laughs> mm. I think they're, they're really angling Baxter and Mosley together, but the hair thing. I know, yeah. <laughs> How funny was it, you know, he, thinking, oh, I'm just going to look so young. Yeah. In there in the shared bathroom, uh, applying that stuff, hoping no one will come in the Bless door. Bless his little love and heart, <laughs> Mosley. Um, this is funny. I, I did a little fact checking before the show, and I think this is just kind of shows how vain actors is. Uh, actors is? is. Well, boy, how smart I it's is early in the today day. on Monday. <laughs> Sorry. How, um, <laughs> I don't know. But the actor who plays Mosley, Kevin Doyle, is 54 years old. Uh, the character he's playing on the show is 51, and so even when Baxter says he looks 52, really, you know, 
she's shorting him a couple of years. So I don't know. I, I just thought that was a little funny. You know? Vanity. Yeah. She we seems have. to like Mosley. him. There's a ray of hope there, even for Mosley. Poor Mosley. <laughs> she, she does. Yeah. She really, I don't know. But that's interesting. Well, if we, she sticks around. Yes, we shall yeah. see. We Cora's need to... just so indecisive. I'll give you my answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need to talk about Baxter real quick. We're almost out of time. But, oh. uh, yeah, she's a thief. Yes. Ooh. Oof. So why didn't she give the jewels back? I, you know, Baxter to me it seems, you know, very kind, very thoughtful, but maybe not the strongest willed person like maybe someone manipulated her into doing that but that is just a theory i i think we'll see i hope we'll find out as the series progresses this season i like her she's the first yeah. one that kind of stuck it to thomas yeah. she did. and he Almost had got fired. egg all over his face but Until i love thomas i'm glad he didn't get yeah, we're gonna have him I still, I still hope have hope that character will be redeemed because i think is you know, it's nastiness comes from a place of, you know. Isn't it interesting that they spent a whole half season, that the second part of season three, redeeming Thomas and making him relatable and, you know, Jimmy's friend. And now he's just, you know, I, I hope that we can see that side of Thomas. Again, the, you know, slightly sympathetic, not totally psychopathic manipulator. I think, yeah, I mean, I think that's just all he has, right? Or people's secrets. That's his currency, I guess. Uh-huh. But now he's, he is cemented in. He is there. He is not leaving because of saving Lady Edith and the, the house. You couldn't be more secure in, in your job. Man, if it would have been he saved Mary, they probably would have gave him the keys to the... <laughs> yeah. Excuse know. me, Mr. Carson. I'm letting <laughs> you go. You can move upstairs. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> hmm. so... Yes. The, the estate, thankfully, is uh, relatively unscathed after Edith tried to burn the place down in her grief. That was a great line. <laughs> Lady Edith chose to set fire to her room, but we're fine. That's what Mary said. We're fine. What a response time for the uh, estate fire. Oh, my too. gosh. <laughs> Lickety split. Which, if I were him, I'd kind of be like, you know, do you really trust her parenting skills? Because she did burn her, her room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Luckily, it was limited what just to eat his room. She's, she's going to have to stay there flag. as her punishment. She's going to have to live there. Well, <laughs> let's. It, we are in OT here, folks. Let's okay. um, oh. wrap up. Any predictions for either the next episode or the series, Robert? What do you think? Ooh, what do you want to happen? What do you think will happen? Well, I, you know, I gave the. I thought you know, Lady Mary and and uh, Branson, but um, um, what's going to happen with uh, Jimmy? You know he's 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 fired, right? Um, Very discreet. Yeah. Will yeah. that roll back? Will Jimmy stay? Will he not? Mm. I'm excited to see what happens with the Mary and Lord Gillingham's little trip they're going to take. Oh, wink, wink. What's the? You know, no one, no one must know, but that means everyone's going to find out. And also, um, how much worse will things get for Edith because I'm sure they're going to get worse as they always do. So we'll see. But yeah. And then Baxter and Mosley, the love story continues. I hope she gets to stay on so that he can do more weird things to take years off of his face (laughs) and scalp. I want to see a love interest for the Dowager Countess. That is my only... I want her to have something to do besides scheme and manipulate her frenemy... Isabel. So what? They're yeah. not. She was trying to help her. Wink. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to help her by, you know, breaking up with Lord Murray. She was threatened, of course, by. See now, I, now I thought Isabel was not interested in Lord Merton, but after I'm starting to change my mind. I think she didn't really like Lady Shackleton, uh, taking up some of her attention. We shall see if that happens. We will talk about it on Up with Downton. I'm Chase. Ashley. And Robert. We'll see you next week.